All right, so today we're going to be checking out Pop OS, the latest version called Cosmic. And this is based off of Ubuntu 24.04. And I've actually been waiting for this release for quite some time because it's something I've been really meaning to check out. Now, I was a huge fan of Pop OS back in 18.04 and 20.04. Funny enough, I didn't play with 22 or use it as a main system for a while. It was good, but it felt like a workbench. They were putting more projects and more projects on top of it, so it didn't feel feel refined so here we are we are checking out pop os 24 so i'm hoping everything is settled but i gotta say it is definitely not as refined as the way i want it to be so so we're going to be checking out the system together all right so here we have the desktop the installation was pretty straightforward so i'm not really going to show that but what we have going on is let's check out settings now this is based off gnome and the settings alone look completely different especially if you take a first look at this you could tell that this actually has like a border or an accent around it, which helps the tiling mode a lot, especially if you are planning to use this as a tiling mode. The first thing we have is wallpaper. So you could go over here and check out what wallpaper they have. I actually do like this wallpaper that I have right now, but there are a few that you can choose from, especially the cosmic one right over here. But I am gonna keep it as default just so we could check it out with the theme on what they wanted to see it as. Next we have appearance. And then this is the biggest change of them all. So one thing is that you can now choose the accent border as well as the window color itself. So there isn't really much of a theme like saying choosing like Nordic or whatever arc theme or whatever, but you can actually just choose from your accent colors. Say if I wanted to change a border color to something like orange or yellow or green, it just changes right away. And this changes all the other things like this font right over here, this font over here, but you can also change it manually. So say like I want to keep it in blue and then I can now change the application background. So if I want the application background to be more of a red or white or this type of color, you can just choose it. I'm just gonna reset back to default because I'm just gonna leave it like that. But yes, you can change the background color as well as the interface text, which right now is white. So this is the interface text. I could change that to green. Uh, I'm gonna reset that back to default. And then the control component, you could also change that into like a different color as well. So these are the buttons and everything, the background for the buttons. And I'm just gonna reset this back to default. So you can play around with some stuff. And what's cool is that you could actually export what colors you have and then you can import them back later or you can send them to a friend, whatever you want. Now, they're also like different styles. So you have the pill style, then you have the slightly rounded borders, then you have the square borders so you can see the buttons are changing. I'm just gonna leave this as rounded corners. And then you have a few other settings like experimental settings. You could actually change the icons and stuff. But that's as far as you can get with changing the theme. So if you want to install like a Nordic theme, as of right now, I don't think you can. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But yeah, it's kind of locked down. And I don't like how they lock down the Pop OS system compared to how I would normally use it. Going back to desktop, there's a few other things. You got panels that you could actually adjust each panel on top. So you could actually uh, position it on top, the different stylings. You could configure the panel so you have different like things. You can move it up and down. And then going back out to the panel, going to desktop, there's the dock you can modify. So you could uh, change the style of this. So if we wanted to change the size of the dock, we could just go smaller or bigger or whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it like this. You could also change it so there's a gap underneath or not. So I like it now with uh, like this style. This is how it was before on the previous versions where it's like a pill style like this. But I like the new style, so I'm going to leave it like that. And then again, you can configure dock applets over here, launch button, workspace, app, app tray, stuff like that. Going back out and then heading into window management, you can actually change it with the super key launcher or minimize buttons. And then we got workspaces. I do really like the new workspace. So now if you go to workspace, you actually have different desktops and then your window. So if you have multiple windows, you could actually slide left and right. So it's like a fancy alt tab. And now if you want to modify it a little bit more, you could go to horizontal and then workspaces and they'll be on top. I actually like this look too, but again, it's up to you. So there are some customization, but not to the point where you could change out the theme. Now going on to display, this is your resolution. This doesn't change. This is pretty much the same. You do have fractional scaling because it is using Wayland on this one now. And then you have your power and batteries. If you want to change it to different modes, you could change it right over here. Input devices, you got your keyboard, mouse, or whatever you have, other like a joystick or a controller or something, you'll see a pop up in here. 
time language this is self-explanatory so you could change your time and then your language you could add more languages or just keep whatever you want over here apparently for this it's not working so i don't get to add any more languages that i wanted to and then you have your system accounts where you can make users again this is broken i don't know why this is what i mean like it's not as polished there's certain things that look like it should be working but it's not now i am on a board called the zima blade and this is using an intel celeron j3455 with 1.5 gigahertz so this is a lower end cpu but it's handling this operating system pretty well and according to disk capacity which i only installed like one or two apps i'm going to show you guys the disk capacity in a second after this but yes uh, i am on uh wayland and it is using seven gig uh, well i have eight gigs of ram so getting out of this, I'm going to go over to application, then I'm going to use a program called Usage, which is, I installed this. This is a GNOME Usage program, which has a better visuals for processor memory. So as far as memory goes, just on a fresh boot, it is using a lot more RAM, which is 1.8 gigs of RAM. And maybe because this has 8 gig system, that's why it's using a little bit more, but it is eating up a lot more RAM than it used to. And as far as storage goes, it is using about 11 gigs and I only have about three programs installed, which is this usage and two other ones I'm going to show you in a second. One of the things that I had a problem with was getting extensions to work because that's a huge part of GNOME. I like extensions. And if I go to like GNOME extensions, this is something I downloaded. It doesn't work. It just has an error occurred. I can't see what current extensions they are, which I know that these are extensions right over here with the tiling window, but it doesn't connect correctly so i can't download or install new extensions because of this which means i can't download user themes which means i can't change themes uh, the next program that i have is gparted but it doesn't want to work like i click on it type in the password and let's see if it worked this time nope it's not going to work I, i'm not sure why but it could be something related to their version so i'm going to do gparted and as you can see it's going to kick back with display error. Cannot open display number one. And I don't know, it's an operating system problem or how many more other programs will have this issue. But yeah, just standard programs like this, I can't even get it to run. My biggest thing about using GNOME is to get extensions to work and I can't get extensions to work either. But they do have their own extensions already. So if I was to use, say, automatic tiling, which I do really like, I could actually open up file, open up terminal, open up Firefox, and all in all, it will get everything up and running and it will automatically tile itself. And if you wanted to change it around, you could actually just move this, which I do like. I really like the tiling because it actually makes it a lot easier to use than a lot of other tiling managers that I've played around with before. But ultimately in the end, I feel that this operating system is still not as polished. There's also an issue that I had to fix with app get. So sudo app update. Let me see. I, I believe I fixed on this one already. Yeah. Normally it would spit back out with a lot of errors saying that the key wasn't working. They do have an issue board on how to fix that, which isn't just an easy method to get around to fix. They did patch it on the later versions, but it's not out yet. But there were issues with app get itself where it was kicking back issues because the, oh, there you go. The keys weren't working and to get this to work you would have to insert your own keys and all this other stuff so yeah there's also problems with app get uh this might also be related to the same problem why we're having issues with extensions but i'm not about to figure this out again this operating system only came out about three or four days ago so you're bound to run into issues to be honest i think it was a little bit premature to release it this way because there are a lot of issues with this, especially with getting AppGet to work. Last but not least, we're going to check out their App Center, which does have flat pack support. So if I do flat seal, which is a flat pack, you can see flat seal is uh, right there. Uh, we have all these uh, flat pack uh, programs, and they do work. So we don't have an issue with flat pack issues. But uh, again, there are software center does support it. Now, all in all, I do like this, but I think I have to wait out probably another couple of months before they iron out all the issues that they have before replacing my current desktop with Pop! OS because I used to rely on Pop! OS a lot as a main desktop. And I, I might 
begin to use it but only if they fix the extension issues as well as the app get issues and getting to programs to run issues again your mileage may vary by the time you download this it might have fixed already but this is the experience that i'm getting and this has only been about three days old anyway that is it with this video if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and then say my nerd cave heck till it hurts